Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Welcome to another Distress Ink and Oxide colour combination video. Today we're going to be looking at Wilted Violet, a beautiful bright purple. So this one is one of my favourite purples actually because it kind of almost goes into the pinks with how bright it is. I really love it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to swatch this onto white cardstock. We're going to compare it with other purples in the uh, Ink and Oxide range as well uh, and other pinks if need be. We're going to do a tonal colour combination so you can create a nice ombre background if you wish. And then I'm also going to give you another completely different colour combination that you can try out with this too. Everything I'm using is linked down below and don't forget to check out the playlist with all of the other Distress Oxide videos included. So if you love any of the colours in the Distress Ink and Oxide range you'll find a video for that there. So like I say first thing, let it, let's let just swatch this onto white cardstock. Now I use blending brushes, if you prefer foams it will make no difference to um, the way these colours blend together, so that's completely your preference. So let's just go around in small circles, as always I'm going to in, into the middle of a strip of white stamping cardstock, the reason I use stamping cardstock is because it's super smooth so I get a nice blend on there. As my ink's going down I've got a few little spits of paper left in my bristles from where I washed my brushes and they're causing these little marks. They'll soon go and I can usually blend over those anyway. So that is Wilted Violet. As you can see it's a really bright purple, very beautiful, very very vibrant as well. So let's take a look inside our colour chart here this is free for you to download you get it on my website it's all linked in the description on this video and with this it comes not filled in so you do need to fill it in at home and then you can see which colors you've already got and where you're missing big gaps as well so wilted violet just here we can see just below that we've got dusty concord which is a touch darker Strangely, the, this is not alphabetical order. This is actually the order in which Ranger list the colours. So how they've placed them. I don't know how they do it, how they work it out, but that's how they've done it. So they've put Shaded Lilac in between Seedless Preserves and Wilted Violet. I always feel like Wilted Violet sits closer to Seedless Preserves, but either way, that's how they've done it. So we've then got Shaded Lilac. And as we go through, we've got Milled Lavender, obviously much, much paler, and we're into the blues that side. We can look at the pinks, I don't think there's anything similar in the pinks either. No, there you can definitely see the purple in it, can't you? So, there really is nothing similar that's in the range that's going to kind of match Wilted Violet. So, if you want to do this one, I would definitely suggest grab uh, the actual ink pad itself rather than replacing it with another colour. So let's do a tonal um, combination for you. So I'm going to be using Wilted Violet in the middle as I have here, Milled Lavender on one end and the Villainous Potion on the other end. So a really dark and a really pale lilac or purple colour either end. So these are great, like I say, if you want to do a background just in one colour rather than mixing colours. So I'm going to pop my Milled Lavender on the end here. And I tend to go from light to dark or dark to light either way. If I'm doing um, a background, I might go across the page with the colours, a bit like I do with this strip. Or I could work with usually the palest colour in the centre and then work my way out to the darkest colour on the outside. And there's lots of different ways to create blending. Now I'm building up the milled lavender because it is such a pale colour. This particular cardstock seems to want to grip onto it in places more than others, so you get this speckled effect, but what I usually find is once that's dry, fully dry, uh, that disappears, that kind of fades, so I'm not too worried about that at the moment. Now I'm going to use the milled lavender and I'm going to blend down into the wilted violet there. And I'm doing it this way because the milled lavender is the paler colour, so it won't override the wilted violet at all but hopefully drag some of it and mix it in just a touch so it's actually doing really really well here there's a little bit of the um sometimes the fibers from the edge of the ink pad can come away that's what that was so just going back over that blend line small circles you can see that sort of 
the speckled effect there that we've got on the cardstock. I say usually I get that and usually I find once the ink has dried that all disappears. It depends which cardstock you've used. Um, I can't tell you which one I've got at the moment. I thought this was a smooth stamping cardstock, but I'm thinking actually it might not be um, a stamping cardstock because it's got that texture in it. Well, we'll see when it's dry what it looks like. So there's the Mood Lavender into Wilted Violet, which looks absolutely beautiful on its own. Let's now add a hit of dark colour on the other end with Villainous Potion. I'll just pop this over there to hold that still really deep dark colour definitely blends beautifully into wilted violet there we go so get that up to the colour first of all I'm not worried about blending just yet I'm just worried about putting solid colour down first drag it off the mat so we don't waste any as well there we go, so I'm up to that line. Now again, I'm going to come in with the lighter colour, so I'm going to come back with a little bit of ink on my Wilted Violet brush. I'm going to put the brush down initially where it's solid colour, and then work in circles up to that blend line, the join line, and continue over into the Villainous Potion a little. Not too much, I'm going to work quite a bit at that blend line. I think I'm going to repeat that as well once more. So starting over in the solid colour so I don't put a big blob of the Wilted Violet down in the Villain's Potion and then start blending up. That's gorgeous, I like that. Love those two together. So this one as you can see the milled lavender is kind of speckled but I think that's just because it's such a pale colour you can really see where the dye is soaking in to the paper so I'm hoping that as that dries that kind of fades out. If it didn't fade out I would definitely be sprinkling some water on there to give it that distressed look, that water reactive look and that would disguise any of that. So they are two colours that you can mix with Wilted Violet. Let's have a clean up and then go to a really bright colour combination. So now I'm going to be mixing Wilted Violet with Peacock Feathers and Twisted Citron to get a really bright pop of colour. Sometimes I'd be tempted to also put something like Pitch Raspberry at the end of this to get four colours, but I believe I've already done a similar combination to that. So I'm going to stick with the three colours. So Wilted Violet down first on the end here. And because I'm doing three colours rather than four for this one, I usually do four for my second combination. But sometimes I just feel like I don't need a fourth colour and I'd just be choosing it to make up the numbers. So sometimes I just leave it as three colours. So there we go, that's blended in nicely. Let's just give that a little bit of a wipe because we're going to be switching to a completely different colour and that's going to be Peacock Feathers. Now I'm hoping these two will blend okay together because there is a blue base to both of them. So obviously purple has blue in it and the turquoise colour has blue in it as well. So I'm hoping that will help these two blend nicely. Again I've got something in my brush there that's causing some little lines but if I keep working at that that should even those out okay. So just filling in the space, first of all, whereabouts I'd like um, the peacock feathers to be kind of solid colour where you're going to really see it. Blend that up there. We'll worry about that into the twisted citron in a bit. A bit more there. So get that solid colour down first. Make sure that's all there, filled in, no white patches left. Then I'm going to drag a little bit of the peacock feathers up towards the wilted violet. So just about starting to touch the edge of it there. So what you tend to do with the blend lines is two thin layers, three, four, five. You keep going in thin layers until you've built up, uh, kind of overlapping them. But like I say, only in thin layers. You don't put it down too heavy between the two. So now a little bit of wilted violet on your brush and now we're going to go up into the peacock feathers and we should have a nice colour sort of blue in between the two which we have a deeper purple it's a lovely colour 
gorgeous okay happy with that so let's give that a wipe and now that pop of bright color on the end i mean that is a beautiful combination just those two on their own anyway but now twisted citron in the end and using my vellum just to hold this still because vellum isn't quite as absorbent as paper or cardstock so i use that to hold this still this is such a beautiful color twisted citron i really enjoyed doing the combination video for this one and pop now i kind of had to go into greens because when i was little i had my bedroom painted um i think it was it was green on the bottom and purple on the top it was more of a turquoise really um than a green but we had a decorator come around and do it. It was crazy because I wanted, I didn't want a straight line between the two or a border. I wanted a wavy line. So he had to draw on a wavy line and then hand paint those edges. He probably really cursed me at the time, but I loved it. I absolutely loved green and or turquoise and purple together. So I kind of had to do that for this combination in with that purple. There we go. So just those two blended again, just lightly over the blend line. There we go. It's definitely the paper because look, you can see that sort of mottling happening on this one too. But if we look at this one, it started to fade where it started to dry. So I think it will do, oops, I think it will do with this one also. So that is Wilted Violet. This is the second from last in the Distress Oxide series. I have one more video to do, which is one lipstick. And then we are at the end of all of the Distress Oxide colours. So keep an eye out for that one coming by the end of the year. Um, I hope you've enjoyed these combinations. If you have, check out that playlist with everything else in it just here. And I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel just here as well if you haven't done already. And a thumbs up on the video would be amazing. Thank you everybody. Take care. I'll see you again very soon for that last video.